Hey, this is Nettie with Rocket Powered Sound, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys four tricks that Flume uses in his drops. So ahead of time, I've already made a drop, so we can kind of talk about it as we go. Uh, and this is what it sounds like. So yeah, pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to be showing you guys kind of how I made it and how you can make something similar and things you can do to get your music sounding kind of similar to Flume. So let's get right into it. Okay, so tip number one is to use varying bass presets. So what I mean by this is when you listen to like the basses that I used in this song, you'll notice they're all like different from one, from one another. So if I play this back. They're all like different sounds, right? And this creates like a really chaotic sound, but like also in a good way, right? And so using these different like presets is like a really great way to create like a chaotic, but like almost like controlled sound because you're like only, you're only applying it to like, you know, each time a new chord hits. So it kind of, it kind of works uh, wonders in that way. So I got these presets from Flutter for Serum by Rocket Powered Sounds, which is a preset pack. Um, so I, I don't think I touched any of these except like this one, um, any of the presets, I didn't touch any of them except this one might be like a little bit to get the tone like right um, but otherwise it's just straight out of the box um so these are just kind of like saw wave basses that you kind of like crank really loud with like a reverb like in the mix right so like when you have like this reverb you get kind of like a really ridiculous sound sometimes um and the, that's what's going on in this one uh we have this one as well this one is the complete insanity bass um, which is more kind of the similar, you know, same similar kind of stuff going on. Just a ridiculous bass overall with like some crazy decays going on. Yeah, we have this one. And uh, this is just another, this is Ridicule. Uh, and uh, again, this is all from the same pack. Um, this is just got some, some crazy effects going on completely untouched, like from like out of the preset. Um, but you can tweak them by the way. So like, for example, if I wanted this one different, like I can make it like cleaner or more messy. <laughs> right, you could go pretty pretty nuts with this. Doesn't really matter, right? And it's just the more ridiculous, the better. And then lastly, we have the uh, mob bass, which is a pretty simple one. Uh, and that just plays there. And so yeah, using like four basses like that really helps with like kind of creating like a really chaotic and, and cool sound that is reminiscent of Flume. So let's go to the next tip. So tip number two is to create ridiculous synth decays. So what that means is like when I played play back this, uh, this like, you know, this, this bass group. You've got like pretty crazy like decay stuff that happens like after the note is, the note is gone, right? So like right here, like uh, at this like mark, you'll, you'll notice like it, it's the note stops, but like it carries on, right? Right, the, like the, for this like kind of duration, there's like still stuff going on, which is largely to do with the fact that there's like a, like a bunch of effects that play like kind of before and after like a bunch of other effects. So like, let me show you what I mean by, my, what I mean by that. So we have like that delay here. And like this is like ringing out really long and like on like a really fast speed, so. You can see, you can see like how I can exaggerate the effect and it just gets even crazier. Um, um, and yeah, that's running into like a, a hyper dimension and a distortion, so it creates this like super like crazy overdriven like effect and everything gets like super like overwhelmingly loud almost, but it's controlled, right? Um, and so yeah, we have like some more like effects going on as well. Not not too important, but like it creates a kind of like cool like after effect like a ring, ringing sound, and that that's like really cool. Same with this. Like I think it's more like similar stuff. Like I think this in this instance it's like a reverb. Yeah, yeah. Using like a reverb on like the hall mode in Serum uh, kind of creates that effect, which is like really cool. And then this one is like. Kind of more simple but yeah these are kind of all like like presets that have that like ring out effect and like really helps to like tie this together when you have like these like little gaps that you want to fill in right um so yeah let's move on to the next one So tip number three is to use a ridiculous snare. So I got some drums from the Future Bundle, which is again another sample pack from Rocket Powered Sound. Um, I did a little bit of tweaking to the snare uh, to like get it to sound like that. Originally it sounds like this. 
Um, but like making snares like this is pretty easy when you kind of know like how to do it. So essentially what I did here is I have like a parallel chain going on. So imagine like that I have like two audio tracks and like I have like both of these playing like at the same time. So like for example, like this, uh, like this effect chain is like here, like on one of them. And then like you have like another one that doesn't have any effect on it. Like it's kind of doing that essentially. So like um, there's two two snares running into the same thing and you have the dry version and then the, the wet version. Now on this, there's a vocoder, which is what creates that like ring uh, ringing effect. Um, so let me turn these off real quick. So without the vocoder, it sounds like this. With a vocoder. The thing that creates the sound is the bandwidth being all the way down. So if it's just like 100%, just sounds like a snare loop. As you turn it down, it creates these like weird little peaks, and it's a really cool effect if you don't uh, already know it. Then there's a chorus or a corpus. This I don't think this exists in like any other DAW that I know of, but I know there's alternatives for like uh, FL Studio and maybe Logic. I'm not too sure. Uh, so you can look for that if you are really dedicated to getting a corpus-like effect, and then just a frequency shifter to pitch it up and down. Right. So I have one instance where it plays this note, and then one instance where it plays this note. And that is, you know, pr a pretty ridiculous snare. Like, so that was tip number three to use ridiculous snares. Let's move on to the fourth tip. So the fourth and final tip is to click a long stompy kick. So you might be wondering, what the hell does that mean? Great question. Um, so this kick is really long. As you can hear, it's got like a very long like tail to it. If I just cut it short, it sound a bit more like a normal kick. But it's got this really long like like tail, right? And so again, this is from the future bundle, and like it has that kind of like like stomp like to it, you know what I mean? And the cool thing is when you like this, so this this whole track is not being side chained. If I just turn off the drums, like there's no side chaining, right? So there's no side chaining going on in my project file at all. But when I clip this really loud, right? So this is this is uh, I've turned up by six decibels here. It creates this like almost like pumping effect that like is created by the clipping. So it's actually like a really cool effect. If I turn this up even more, I can kind of exaggerate the effect. You can hear like everything ducks down for it, for just that kick. Now obviously like this is a bit distracting, so you kind of have to do it in moderation. But yeah, it's a cool effect. It adds like a cool like pumping effect to it for when you have these like kind of slower, more like, you know, I, I don't know, I guess like headbanger tracks. So yeah, if you guys are interested in checking out any of these presets, there are a link below if you wanna go check them out. Uh, I hope you guys found this video educational and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye-bye.